So our final presenter is Nestle Purina. Uh, Larry Boehner is a senior packaging research scientist with Nestle Purina. And as a subject matter expert in packaging sustainability, Larry is a core team member of Nestle's corporate packaging environmental sustainability network. Within the network, he leads the end of life working group for the network, which is responsible for establishing and sharing best practices for packaging designed for recovery guidelines. Larry has been with Nestle for over 18 years, 15 of them being in pet food. Based out of St. Louis, he lives with a golden retriever, a domestic short hair cat, and a tabby. So Larry, I will turn this over to you and let me know when you want me to advance slides. All right, thanks a lot. We, uh, we're really pleased to have this opportunity to talk to everybody today and share with you a little bit about um, packaging sustainability at Nestle Purina. Next slide, please. So, I mean, sustainability is increasingly important to companies, large and small, because it, it really positions us well for the future and allows, them to be, allows, allows us to be more cost efficient and helps us connect with our consumers. Uh, next slide. I wish the slide to catch up in my end here. Anyway, so at Nestle, uh, we, we have a thing we called um, our shared value platform. And uh, creating sh shared value is a way we work that adds value to our shareholders, our employees, communities, and society. So, and here, sustainable packaging is an important part of our sustainability commitment, and it's increasingly important to our consumers. Next slide. The, uh, so, I mean, this is essentially what we just said, you know, uh, so we have Nestle and then we have Nestle Purina. We're also putting these, these values in place. Next slide. This, this next slide is actually pretty interesting because this is really, um, this is what our consumers want. Uh, I think other people have mentioned it on the call today, but 58% uh, of pet owners um, or 78% really wanna know what can we do with our packaging? Can, you re can it be recycled? So uh, that's really what's driving a lot of our uh, or d driving some of our, our work in packaging design. Next slide, please. So relevant to what uh, Jay was just talking about, um, well, uh, we, we, what we have is, um, I should step back, the number one purpose of our packaging is protect the product. So essentially damage reduction is, equal, is really uh, a major sustainability win. When we spoil the food or the package is, packaging is damaged or unsaleable, then all the embedded energy, water, and raw material is lost. So, you know, sometimes we have to do things that we'd rather not, but the first uh, first priority is always protect the product. Next slide. So our, uh, like Jay mentioned, um, we do we use life cycle assessment tools in our packaging development. We call these eco design tools. What we do is in our packaging development phase, we'll use the sustain uh, these uh, life life cycle assessment to see what the impact of different packaging options will be on the environment. It's part of our overall decision-making process in, uh, in accept or going to market with new packaging. Next, next slide, please. So, uh, um, so these are some of the main opportunity areas for packaging sustainability. And um, you know, there's, we'll, we'll talk about a couple of them here today. Next slide, please. So, I mean, this is, re reduction of packaging is kind of a no-brainer from a sustainability point. Anytime you reduce the mass of your material that's being used, it's automatically uh, more sustainable. But I think more to the point is uh, looking through the lens of sustainability um, and we can, uh, it leads us to new technologies that also helps us uh, reduce, um, for example, our carbon footprint of our packaging and uh, by, by uh, going to our vendors and asking them to uh, work with us to implement these new technologies. So I think we can uh, come up with some new ways to, uh, to, to save our, to reduce our packaging. Next slide, please. You always want to start with reduction. Now, one of the areas I think that's really going to be uh, taking increasing importance is the uh, design for recovery. And here in the U.S., that's pretty much where we are right now. Um, we have single stream recycling systems. So what we want to do is we want to we want to design our packaging so that it can be sorted and it can be recycled. And if if it can't be recycled, then uh, then we'll have to the, the next the least 
a uh, desirable outcome would be actually to do energy recovery on it. Next slide, please. So what you have to understand, though, is in order to design the packaging, you have to understand how do um, the material recovery systems work in the, uh, the MRFs. Um, and so, you know, you've got things like air float separation for paper and films, magnetic separation for steel, eddy currents for aluminum separation, and near infrared, followed by float density separation. So when you design your packaging, you need to think about, um, you know, what's going to allow effective sorting of this material. For example, an all-black packaging can't be detected by near infrared, so therefore it's, it ends up going into the rest um, waste uh, segment of the uh, material recovery facility. Um, you know, uh, if you're going to have a polyester bottle, you want to make sure that you have uh, a label that is a polyester label, not a PE label. So another area here is um, also, uh, you know, if you're going to recover the materials, well, how about using recycled materials in your products? Now, for food, we, in, the, in the pet food industry, we need to use food-grade recycled plastic materials. So these are just some, some examples. Um, the polyethylenes are just coming online. There's a few sources that we can use. Uh, recycled pet, that's pretty widely available and uh, certainly um, could be used for uh, pet food. Recycled polypropylene still under development. Next slide. So, um, you know, we are doing a lot in-house to investigate different polymers for recyclability as well as product protection, doing light weighting and that type of thing. But we're also finding ways to partner with consumers to help them recycle or dispose of the packaging properly. So here we've created a, a packaging recycling tool, recycling tool on our website for consumers to know what their package is made of and how and where to recycle it. And then next slide. Uh, one of, we, we had some uh, promotions earlier this year with Recycle Bank to ra raise awareness about recyclability of pet food cans. Uh, we, have, we sell several billion of these uh, aluminum cans. They can easily be recycled with uh, aluminum um, packaging. We've also got reminders on YouTube and Facebook pages uh, as well as stories on our website about how uh, our consumers can participate in uh, recovering and recycling packaging. So finally, one of the uh, more challenging, challenging issues that we have here is, is how to get packaging material that can be technically recycled from the consumer to recycle and re recycled resin users uh, since community recycling capabilities vary widely. So for example, our woven polypropylene bags are, are a good example of that. The polypropylene offers the most protection for the least amount of material. It is very recyclable, and there's a readily uh, there's a, a ready recycled resin market, but most material recovery facilities aren't able to uh, sort these bags. So uh, there needs to be an, a collaborative infrastructure development to d address this problem, and uh, we've re retained a recycled packaging consultant to help us map out a tough bag collection pilot that will involve many partners. Maybe some of you on this call will participate to help us figure out a way to collect these woven polypropylene, polypropylene bags from consumers and keep the material in the value chain. So you'll be probably be hearing a little bit more about this in coming months, and uh, that's just about it for what we have to say today. All right, thanks, Larry. It was good to get a sense from another pet company um, on what you're doing internally to try to innovate um, beyond some of the issues that we're having. And thank you for pointing out um, that many of the issues we face are systematic issues that will require collaborative work because that's too much for one company to do on their own.